Chapter 13, Learning Objective 2, Describe the characteristics of a partnership including how its financial statements are different from those of a corporation. A partnership is a business that is owned by more than one person. A partnership contract details the partner's agreement on each partner's rights and duties, the sharing of income or losses, and withdrawals, and dispute and termination procedures. A partnership is not a separate legal entity the business and the partners are considered to be the same entity. Each partner's share of the profits is taxed as part of that partner's personal income tax return. The partners are subject to unlimited liability which means that if the business could not pay its debts, the partners would be responsible even if the business's debts were greater than their personal resources. An exception to this would be the formation of a limited liability partnership, LLP that is permitted for professionals such as lawyers and accountants. The general partners are responsible for the management of the partnership and assumes unlimited liability, while the limited partners have limited liability but also limited roles in the partnership as specified in the partnership agreement. An LLP has a limited life and is subject to mutual agency whereby a partner can commit the partnership to any contract because each partner is an authorized agent of the partnership. A partnership is similar to a proprietorship in that each partner's investment into the business is credited to an owner's capital account. The difference is that in a partnership, there will be more than one owner's capital account. Let's look at an example. Assume Doug Wharton, Lisa Bartwiz, and Tahani Beauty started a partnership called WBB Consulting and invested cash of $20,000, $15,000, and $40,000, respectively. The journal entry to record the investment includes a debit to cash for $75,000 and credits to each partner's capital account for their respective contributions to the partnership. Recall that a corporation distributes a portion of income earned to its owners, the shareholders, in the form of dividends. In a proprietorship and partnership, however, the owner or partners distribute a portion of the income to themselves in the form of withdrawals. Let's refer to our WBB consulting example and now assume Wharton, Bartwiz, and Beauty each withdraw $5,000. The journal entry to record the withdrawal includes debits of $5,000 to a withdrawal account for each of the partners and a credit to cash for the total withdrawals of $15,000. The closing entries for a partnership are much the same as those for a proprietorship except that for a partnership there is more than one withdrawals account and more than one capital account. The only complexity with the closing entries for a partnership is with closing the income summary account to the capital accounts. The complexity stems from the partnership agreement which details how incomes and losses are to be allocated. We will look at five different examples of allocations of partnership income or losses. For example 1, assume WBB Consulting earned $60,000 during the year and the partnership agreement stipulates that incomes or losses are to be allocated equally. The journal entry to close income summary to the partner's capital accounts includes a debit to income summary of $60,000 for the net income and credits to each of the partner's capital accounts for $20,000 each since the income is to be allocated equally among the shareholders. For example, 2, assume now that WBB Consulting had a net loss of $70,000 during the year and the partnership agreement stipulates that incomes and losses are to be allocated on a fractional basis of 2 colon 1 colon 4, respectively. The journal entry to close the income summary to the partner's capital accounts would include debits to the Wharton, Bartwiz, and Beauty capital accounts for $20,000, $10,000, and $40,000, respectively, and a credit to income summary for the total loss of $70,000. The calculation for Wharton's allocation is 2 divided by 2 plus 1 plus 4 multiplied by 70,000, which equals $20,000. The calculation for Barwa's allocation is 1 divided by 2 plus 1 plus 4 multiplied by 70,000, which equals $10,000. The calculation for beauty's allocation is 4 divided by 2 plus 1 plus 4 multiplied by 70,000, which equals $40,000. For our third example, assume WBB Consulting had a net income of $100,000 during the year and the partnership agreement stipulates that incomes and losses are to be allocated on the ratio of capital investments. 
The journal entry to close the income summary to the partner's capital accounts would include a debit to income summary for the net income of $100,000 and credits to Wharton's, Barwas, and Beauty's capital accounts for $26,667, $20,000, and $53,333, respectively. Wharton's allocation is calculated as 20,000 divided by 75,000 times $100,000, which equals $26,667. Barwa's allocation is calculated as 15,000 divided by 75,000 times $100,000, which equals $20,000. Beauty's allocation is calculated as 40,000 divided by 75,000 times $100,000, which equals $53,333. For example 4, assume WBB Consulting had a net income of $60,000 during the year and the partnership agreement stipulates that income and losses are to be allocated based on salaries of $70,000 to Wharton, $20,000 to Bartwiz, 0 to Beauty, and the remainder equally. The journal entry to close the income summary to the partner's capital accounts would include a debit to income summary for $60,000, a debit to Beauty's capital account for $10,000, a credit to Wharton's capital account for $60,000, and a credit to Barwa's capital account for $10,000. Here are the detailed calculations to support the allocations in the journal entry. The net income is $60,000 and exceeds the sum of the salaries to Wharton and Bartwas is $90,000, which results in a difference of $30,000 to be allocated equally among the three partners, or $10,000 each. Thus, Wharton will be allocated $60,000 calculated as his stipulated $70,000 salary less $10,000, or one-third of the shortfall of net income to salaries, and as the amount credited to his capital account. Barwas will be allocated $10,000 calculated as her stipulated $20,000 salary less $10,000, or one-third of the shortfall of net income to salaries, and as the amount credited to her capital account. Beauty is actually charged $10,000 for the shortfall and essentially has to contribute to cover the stipulated salaries of Wharton and Bartwas. For our fifth and final example, let's assume WBB Consulting had a net income of $90,000 during the year and the partnership agreement stipulates that income slash losses are to be allocated based on a combination of a. 20% interest of each partner's beginning of year capital balance, b. salaries of $70,000 to Wharton, $20,000 to Bartwas, $15,000 to Beauty, and c. the remainder equally. The journal entry to close the income summary to the partner's capital accounts would include a debit to income summary of $90,000 in credits to Wharton's, Bartwas, and Beauty's capital accounts for $64,000, $13,000, and $13,000, respectively. Here are the supporting calculations for the allocation of the $90,000 net income. First, we start with the interest due to each partner based on their beginning of year capital balances. Interest is applied at 20% on that balance so Wharton receives 20% of his $20,000 beginning balance, or $4,000. Barwas has a beginning of year capital balance of $15,000, so she should receive $3,000 of interest. Beauty has a beginning year capital balance of $40,000 and her 20% interest allocation is therefore $8,000. Then we add in the stipulated salaries of $70,000, $20,000, and $15,000, respectively. We can see here that the interest due to the partners add up to $15,000 and the salaries add up to $105,000 which sums to $120,000 and is $30,000 greater than the $90,000 net income. Therefore, that $30,000 shortfall must be allocated equally to the partners, for $10,000 each. This means Wharton's final partner allocation is $64,000 based on $4,000 in interest, plus $70,000 in salary less his $10,000 share of the net income shortfall. Barwa's final partner allocation is $13,000 based on $3,000 in interest, plus $20,000 in salary less her $10,000 share of the net income shortfall. Beauty's final partner allocation is $13,000 based on $8,000 in interest, plus $15,000 in salary less her $10,000 share of the net income shortfall. Remember, the total sum of the net income must reconcile to the net income being allocated. Now let's discuss the financial statements for a partnership. 
The income statement for a partnership is identical to that for a proprietorship. The statement of changes in equity for a partnership is similar to a proprietorship's, except that there is a capital account and withdrawals account for each of the partners. By way of example, assume that on January 1, 2023, the first year of operations for WBB Consulting, the partners, Wharton, Bartwiz, and Beauty, invested $20,000, $15,000, and $40,000, respectively. During 2023, they each withdrew $5,000. The statement of changes in equity would appear as illustrated in the next slide given a net income for the year of $90,000 allocated as shown in example 5 previously. Finally, here is what the balance sheet for the WBB Consulting Partnership looks like. Pay special attention to the equity account balances listed for each of the partners, the amounts of which are carried over from the statement of changes in equity.